we know about androgenetic alopecia or male and female pattern hair loss, at least for some people, it's genetic. And I used to think because it was genetic and you can't change your genetics, that there were only a limited amount of therapies that we could offer patients and a limited amount of advice that we could offer patients in terms of preventing hair loss. However, it's become far more apparent in recent years after the Human Genome Project was completed that just having a particular gene doesn't guarantee that you will either get a particular disease or carry a particular trait. Those genes have to be activated and silenced. And that's all about the study of epigenetics. Well, the interesting thing about epigenetics is that those particular controls, many of them are environmental and have to do with things that we're exposed to in our environment, uh, chemicals, diets, dietary changes, supplements. So there's a whole lot more that patients can probably do about hair loss than we ever thought before. For example, there's recent molecular evidence that the types of hormones that are produced during periods of stress can cause hair loss. Now traditionally people have always had that suspicion that stress is an accelerant for hair loss conditions. However, the new emerging science proves that to us, both in animal models as well as human models. So we therefore can determine that if we can reduce stress, that that will make a difference. Interestingly, uh, massage ther therapy has been used in some patients to reduce something called substance P. And substance P has been shown to be one of the molecules involved with hair loss, both in mice and in humans. So perhaps if we actually were to do a controlled trial, we would be able to prove this point. That hasn't been done yet, but there certainly is no harm to patients in finding ways to relieve their stress. So massage therapy, yoga therapy, anything that reduces your emotional stress is probably helpful to preventing hair loss. In addition, other types of stressors in the environment that can likely impact hair loss and have been shown in certain studies to impact hair loss include things like ultraviolet light, uh, cigarette smoking, and we think that alcohol consumption may have an impact at a certain level. And by that I mean that there are different responses to individuals to alcohol consumption where some people can drink a lot of alcohol and probably not feel the physiologic stress, but others are probably more prone to it. So everything in moderation is probably helpful and alcohol is no exception to that.